Welcome back to Great Life, Great Career. Here's your host, Scott Miller. Welcome back, everyone. Our theme today is Relationship Reset. Very excited that our second guest will be Jen Elmquist, licensed marriage and family therapist, the author of a book by the same name. And she'll be joining us after our first conversation with my dear friend of nearly 25 years, Steve Lindsay, who is a senior vice president at Health Equity, who is our host today. Steve, welcome to Great Life, Great Career. Thanks so much, Scott. Great to be here. Thanks. And an honor to be called a friend of yours. Well, you are, brother. You and I started together at the Covey Leadership Center, you before me, when mm-hmm. I was first recruited back in 1996. Steve, along with Todd Davis and a group, were the first people to take me out to lunch and orient me to life in Provo, Utah. Not so abnormal for a guy from Orlando, Florida. (laughs) And you were one of my dearest colleagues and friends, really helped me to assimilate into what is this amazing culture in Utah. And you left our firm about a decade ago and came over to um, Health Equity, excited to learn about the culture here. Steve, tell us what your role is at Health Equity, a bit about the culture. I know you as you know, the health savings account partner, Franklin Covey is a big client of yours, one of your first clients, and I have your card in my wallet, Mm -hmm. but I know you're bigger than just that. Talk a bit about your journey here, what your role has been and is, and kind of what is the emerging face and mission of health equity? So Scott, which of the 18 questions you asked me would you like (laughs) me to start with? Steve knows me well. (laughs) I want you to check them all off in less than two minutes. (laughs) No, so we're, um, yeah, we're known as a health savings account administrator. Right. Um, so we help uh, people save more for their medical expenses. Um, uh, I've been here, as you said, for about 13 years. I started out doing kind of people stuff, uh, moved into operations, and then into sales. Um, I, I love what we do because what we do is help American families. Mm-hmm. We help American families save more and save better for medical expenses, for their futures. Um, we help families. Um, so, I mean, that's a start. Yeah. Guide so, me from there. Scott. So as I, as I think about health equity, like, like millions of Americans, my wife and I have our debit card in our wallet and we know what we use it on prescriptions and doctor's appointments and dentist yeah. things and various things at Walgreens that support that. But it's more than that. And there's a vision health equity has for how you grow really your, your own financial security. Talk a bit about how a lot of your clients, your end users are changing their paradigm about how maybe to use or not use their health savings account. Yeah, perfect. So um, that is right. You know, most people come in and they kind of look at an HSA as a glorified FSA, flexible spending account, ah. right? Cafeteria plan, right. which is a, a use it or lose it plan. Right. And as a former HR leader, right, I'm guilty of really pounding that idea into people's minds about use it or lose it. And so we get into this mindset of spending as opposed to saving. Mm-hmm. And HSA was introduced, that, a, that S in HSA stands for savings. And what a lot of people don't understand is that it's not just a glorified uh, FSA, right? It is, a, it is a genuine personal asset, a savings account that carries over year over year. And um, for the for the for the duration of your life, for the duration of your Whether life, you state your employer or not. That's right. And so so th- so while most people uh, look at it as a, you know, an easier to use spending account, the reality is the greatest use of it is this triple tax advantage that it creates in tax free dollars going in. Right. Tax free growth of those dollars right. and tax free distributions for qualified medical expenses. To take full advantage of that, yeah, what we recommend, Scott, to, to the likes of you, successful business leaders and others, just good American families, is to get the full value of the tax efficiency of that account by putting dollars in, making sure that you're getting the dollars in from your company as well, whether that's through a match or a direct contribution, and then letting those dollars build tax-free right? The dollars carry over, your balance grows over time, you leverage the, the tax efficiency of it, and as a result, get a larger balance, are more prepared for retirement. Medical care costs in retirement are typically a third of your medical expenses. Mm-hmm. Being prepared for that is something that matters a lot to just our joy and happiness in life. Steve, Employers care about it too. Steve, this is one of your many expertise in, in, in your role at Health Equity. What you're really challenging me and my wife and our listeners is to say, focus on the S is that think of it as not a health spending account, but as a health savings account. 
and you're asking me to think more about funding my medical expenses out of my paycheck and discretionary funds and don't use my HSA, let it build over the duration of my career so that when I am retiring or I have a big expense later in life, it's there and it's, it's earned the benefit of the interest. That's exactly right. That you're going to have more in, in, uh, in retirement to spend, more available to you if you will approach it that way yeah. than not, than just I, spending. I'm, I'm 50, and the maximum I can put in a year is about $7,000 $7, as a family. Right. I'm not earning any interest because I'm just I'm using it, right, as if it were a debit card. Yep. And you're, you're kind of challenging me to say, take the health equity card out of my wallet yep. and go put it in my drawer. That's Don't right. Don't use it like it's a credit card or a debit card. I mean, in essence, what we're saying is cut it up. Engage <laughs> in your health care, right? Let go, let go of the spending account that is represented by an HSA yeah. and really get after kind of how do I control my medical yeah. expenses? Find out where you can get the lowest cost prescription, mm -hmm. right? Lower your medical expenses. And in so doing, you're going to benefit yourself and your family. But you know what? In the, it, it also benefits your employer. By taking control of your medical expenses, it ultimately decreases the cost that employers are spending the dollars that employers sure. are spending on medical care, and those can then be allocated for other uses. Obviously not easy for everyone not to use their HSA card, but it's a great paradigm shift for us all to think about, don't use it as your debit card, use it as a savings account, and I'm gonna take my wife's HSA card out of her wallet. <laughs> I mean, Scott, even a quick tip, right? Some people, what they will do is, and I call these, call these hybrid savers. Some people take you know, those expenses that are $100 and less, and they just pay those out of pocket. Sure. And, and expenses that are more than that and a little bit harder potentially yeah. to pay out right. of pocket, they use the HSA. Yeah. That hybrid, just that step in that right direction, yeah. that's going to help them. It's a great ratio. Beauty of, of compounding interest, right? So, Steve, let's talk about health equity as an organization. You've been here for 13 years, kind of one of the founding members, been here a long time. And our theme today is all around relationship reset. First, how would you describe vulnerably the culture here at Health Equity. First of all, you have how many employees? 1,100 wow. team members, not team employees. Members, yep. Come on, Scott, and, and that's so old school. Well, the culture was very palpable. We walked in, great receptionist downstairs, kind of a casual work environment, right? Yeah, pretty casual. Beautiful facility, but a casual work environment. And what's the culture like? You know, I think that it's probably overused, but work hard, play hard, I okay. think really does represent us pretty well. Um, you, you'll also see as you walk around a lot of purple and I purple to that. us is like our mascot. Okay. It stands for being remarkable and derives from this book called the purple cow by Seth sure, Godin. Yeah. Great, great yeah. marketing book. And Seth Godin endorsed my book management mess. Look at that. Yeah. Um, so, he, so that was really influential to our founders where they were, hmm. where, where it was really finding this kind of, we want to stand out. We want to be remarkable. And purple has become this like mascot that stands for going the extra mile mm -hmm. and, and just genuinely being remarkable in what you do and what you deliver to customers and what you deliver to your fellow team members and your family. You have a purple home. culture. Purple culture. Tell us the role that relationships play in sustaining or even sometimes kind of, you know, like, like injuring the culture at any company, especially here at Health Equity. Yeah, you know, what a, I mean, what a deep question. As I'm deep. a guy that's been like in HR for a long right. time, I've, I've seen this, I've watched it. The beauty of relationships is, I think Stephen R. Covey would say, it's synergy, right? What happens when you have right relationships is synergy. The sum of the parts outcome, right? is greater than right. any individual contribution. I would, I would also suggest that the inverse mm -hmm. is true. When relationships are poor, when there's, you know, Stephen M. R. Covey would talk about the power of distrust and the effect of not trusting, right? All of a sudden, there's a cost, there's a tax that comes into the organization that slows things down and impedes progress in really delivering value for customers. Steve, you've been in a leadership role, gosh, for two decades plus, heavily steeped in Franklin Covey's content where we met, you know, 20 years ago. What advice would you give leaders at any level of an organization, whether they're just entering their career or they're kind of on the crescendo or such, if they wanted to increase the trust, the culture of their team, might be 50 people, might be five. What are some immediate things that leaders can do this afternoon 
to increase relationships and the quality of the outcome of those on their own team? Um, so I, you know, look, my, I think my number one would be check your heart. And it's really in two regards. One is what's your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish? What's the vision that you have in mind? Where are you taking people? As a leader, we take people places, whether we intend to do it or not. Mm, we're going to take right. people places. Make sure that that place is a right place, that it's a place you want to take people. Uh, second is around giving. In my opinion, leaders are going to have joy. They're going to build relationships. They're going to be happy if their focus is on giving with all that they have to give and helping others give all that they have to give. I think bringing that together and this mentality of, of not so much what am I going to get out of this, but much more around what can I give and what can I give uniquely? And then, and then a vision that, that stretches everybody you know, just enough that it's kind of uncomfortable, that you're working very hard, that you have these really high expectations that you're working toward with others, you know, you know, experiencing the synergy and stuff like that. What a blast that is. I mean, that's not only fun, but fulfilling and rewarding and accomplishes stuff. So, I mean, I, I think that's another. A third is surround yourself with greatness. Get scared by the people you hire. I hired somebody, I'll never forget this. She still works at Franklin Covey, Catherine. And uh, uh, Australia, she's from Australia, very opinionated, um, strong-minded, bright, uh, you know, like nearly opposite me, right? I don't think so. Right? <laughs> no, but, I, but she was really different than me and really pushed me hmm. and, uh, and um, helped me a lot, both personally and professionally, and pushed our team. It, it created, I think, as a, as a leader, and at that time, what I was trying to do is round out the team. And I knew that we needed that type of personality on the team to really get the most out of the team. So those are a few things. Steve, one of our previous guests was Nellie Galan, who's a kind of a world-renowned entrepreneur, wrote a book called Self Made, writing a new book called Buy Buildings, Not Shoes, it kind of aimed at women in terms of how they save their money. She was one of the celebrities on Celebrity Apprentice. And she has coined a term that isn't maybe original to her called the intrapreneur versus the entrepreneur. People like you that have entrepreneurial spirit, but they deploy it inside of an organization. Yeah. You're one of the founding members here of the Health Equity family, over a thousand team members. What are some of the original beliefs that you were part of helping to codify and model that have been responsible for Health Equity's significant reach and brand and really enduring you know, work with your clients? Uh, so we espouse five values that are set to songs, <laughs> which is totally cool. And it's just <laughs> another insight into the health, the health equity culture. Yeah. So one is, I want to hold your hand. Okay. Right. G catchy tune. Is it Beatles? And this is, yeah. Okay. And this is about building meaningful partnerships and relationships. All right. A second is good vibrations. Okay. Right. Beach Boys. Beach Boys. And this is do the right thing, even when it's not the easiest thing to do. Another is um, what a wonderful world. Uh, this Nat, is, is it Nat Cole or Nat King th Cole? This is uh, Nat, Nat King Cole. Cole. Yes, right. Okay. Or is it Louis Armstrong? There you go. What Super a talented. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I no, do that again. It. Dude, that was awesome. What a wonderful world. For the record, that was Steve Lindsay, not yeah, Scott Miller. Scott. Look at multifaceted. Yeah, no, it wasn't very good. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, but that's making a difference in the lives of millions of Americans. Eye of the Tiger is another value. Wow, who said Eye of the Tiger? Flawless execution. Sorry I for that. I, I don't can't remember. Yeah, okay. And then do you believe in magic? Wow. And this is like scaling the magic, right? There's a black and white to scaling. But when you scale the magic, see, that's a whole different deal where you're maintaining the personal touch. And it was one of the real challenges that even back in the beginning, we acknowledged we wanted a company that was big enough to realize this mission of helping millions of American families save better and save more for retirement, for medical expenses, while maintaining a small company heart. Right. I mean, that to me, mm. what, how great is that? And, and I think we've done a pretty decent job at doing it. We, we work hard at it, but these values, memorable values, um, doing things like our Helping Hands program where we help team members, you know, overcome both financially and emotionally the mm -hmm. challenges of life that mm -hmm. come up, you yeah. know, along the way. We have a similar program at Franklin Covey, the Care Fund. Yeah. 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 
Purple with Purpose is another one where, you know, it's this purple attitude of helping our communities all around by the by health equity giving us time to go out and take days to serve to help out and uh and i'm, I'm warning our radio crew you cannot leave awesome. franklin covey and apply at health equity because i can see why it's such a great place <laughs> to work steve last conversation before we go to break uh, what do you look for in new associates new team members as they come on board what, what types of characteristics competencies do you look for in an interview process what does it take to become a team member here great great question and i'm really happy to answer that one it's a it's something that i think is kind of cool can actually. you do it in a louis armstrong accent for me no, uh, no <laughs> okay, it's not going to go well okay, sorry. So we look, for, we look for several things. One is um, we look for people with service in their DNA. Mm-hmm. This is a little bit getting back to, you know, the whole notion of giving and an acknowledgement of what I have to give. A second is we look for people with the capability to elevate the role that they're being hired for to a different level altogether by being the very best of who they are. We also look for, and this might make you chuckle just a little bit, but we look for people who are fun and engaging. Scott. I can see. Fun and engaging. You. Yeah. And part of the reason is that fun and engaging people who also meet criteria one and two, yeah. they have friends. Right. And they have like friends and like-minded yeah. friends. Mm-hmm. They have friends that are capable. And it has helped us, this mentality and this approach has helped us hire people quickly who are highly qualified, highly skilled, when you get friends in the workplace, you know what happens then, right? Your retention is people higher. Stay, right? People Their stay. Engagement's up, right? They're happy. They right. find joy in, right. the rela- right. in, in relationships. Um, you know, we also look for people who are passionate about life. They're, they, have, they have no less than one thing in life that they're just deeply passionate about, that they believe in, that fires them up, that in the, in the interview you can see this, like lights come open and... And I've got a really funny story for another day, Scott, about hiring for an internal auditor, hmm. trying to follow that criteria. Fun and engaging. Took us months. <laughs> but we found him. You did. We Her. Totally. Him. Yeah. Him. yeah. yeah. It, was, it was amazing. So th- those are some things we look for. What a great conversation. You've given me a couple of insights. Is to become more excited about my four-year-old son. We both have four-year-olds, right? We do. Show more passion in that. And to take my health savings account card out of my wallet submerge it in ice, freeze it, and put it in my freezer. That's right. For like a rainy day. Save. That's save. Save, my friend. More Americans need to do it. Steve, Steve Lindsay, such an honor to have you. Our, our, our life has kind of come full circle, right? It has. I've told people I was married 10 years ago this July, <laughs> and I had a small wedding, about 95 people. So my wife Beautiful and I could wedding. pick the most, our favorite 95 people in the world. And... Steve Lindsay made the cut, and I have, we watch our video once a year. We love watching you come into church what in Park City, Utah. So great to have you, sir. Great to be great here. Friend. Thanks so much, Steve Scott. Lindsay joining us from Health Equity. You're listening to Scott Miller on Great Life, Great Career. We'll be back with our second guest, Jen Elmquist, author of the book Relationship Reset. <laughs> 